Eric Sproul is a Chicago native, a tattoo transformist, and definitely a man on a mission. Get a tattoo, but get a quality tattoo. Get a tattoo, but get a, a tattoo that means something to you now, and at least you have some hope that it's going to mean something in another 15 years. Chicago is known all over the world for its fine art, diversity, and home to hundreds of tattoo artists. But Eric Sproul is one of a kind. From an early age, Eric's proof has had a strong curiosity for the media of tattooing and body modifications, so he set sail to create sacred transformations. About a year and a half, two years of an apprenticeship um, by uh, some of Chicago's very finest and most talented tattoo artists, um, I was ready to, to, to make my own mark, and that mark was to help others remark themselves. Secret Transformations is dedicated to help a diverse group of individuals who've been tattooed, scarred, branded, or burned from negative experiences to transform these marks into magnificent art pieces that celebrate their individuality. So we're talking about uh, scars that may be uh, uh, related to some type of trauma, an accident, a beating, um, a suicide attempt, uh, self-mutilation. We're talking about existing tattoos that may represent um, some, of the, some of the weakest crossroads in that individual's life. This is Roy Adams. Not his real name, though, for obvious reasons. He is here to transform thought-provoking tattoos he had while incarcerated in Arizona. The tattoos themselves were white pride. I was 19 years old when I went in. I just kind of follow the leader kind of thing. I've always followed people and did what pretty much I was told what I should do protect myself. Um, I just been wanting them off. And I was warned that if I didn't, that you know, at a young age like that, that somebody would call me his property and I didn't want that. Growing up, Marius wanted to be a cop, but at the age of 11, he was already a member of the Latin Kings. He was later shot and paralyzed by a rival gang member. With his life turnaround, he too is here to transform an old gang tattoo. Since then, because of my shooting, I've always tried to snag that one guy out of the neighborhood that was, you know, I don't know, kind of like what I saw as like, you know, a real smart kid, a kid that had a future, that had a good heart and could actually do something to help people. So I would always snag those guys. Um, and now we just turned it into, or we're trying to turn it into an official organization where we search out those kids and make sure we get them in school, in work, in the military, some type of training, something good. And it teaches them to go back to the neighborhood and do the exact same thing. Grab another kid, take that kid, put him in school, put him in work, teach that kid to do the same thing. Right, here we go. You ready for our night? Time to bring the pain. Hey, what's up? How are you? Pretty Long good. Time no see. Yeah, <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you too. The work's really coming along. Yeah, I mean, we're like, we're almost done with it. For me, as an artist, that's what makes it compelling and interesting. If I was just drawing tattoo flash designs, I think I would lose interest pretty quickly. Um, but the fact that uh, there's a, a person that is not only on the other end of the design, but a person that is involved. Um, is, makes it very rewarding and very exciting. And uh, it just really exceeded my expectations to see people receive the tattoos and be able to observe firsthand the things that they were saying, their excitement, their facial expression, the, all of the signs and all the signs that tell you somebody is really excited and genuinely pleased and genuinely proud to wear um, the art that you drew is, is really exciting. So that's kept me kept me involved. But the first transformation we did with Roy, um, which was the word pride, and I talked to you in the lobby a little bit, uh, Samuel, about the difference between a cover-up and a transformation. And uh, we not only work with our clients uh, collaboratively to really painstakingly tease out the possibility of what they want, um, but we also take in, um, once we realize what they want, then we really start to dig into the existing mark and rather than just do something that's larger and darker, 
really work um, artistically to create an opportunity to incorporate that mark into the new design. Um, so it's not just some big, darker, bigger thing on top of it, but it really incorporates as much of the negative and positive space as possible. Um, so some people knowing the word pride's in there may say, oh, I can see it, there it is. Like, a, you know, like you're looking at clouds and you're like, yeah, I see the horse's head. Um, but the day-to-day the -day, uh, reality of having a mark that's been transformed is really not ignoring the fact that this was there. It's a part of uh, it's a part of Roy's history. It's a part of his experience. And for anyone who's great in the world, you know, we look at great people, and great people don't deny where they came from. Great people don't cover up their past. Great people don't celebrate negative things, but great people are able to work off of them in a way that allows other people to know they have integrity, that they worked hard at transforming their lives. They worked hard at getting away from a particular lifestyle or a particular way of being and really taking on um, another way. So the, it's still there, but we really incorporate, we incorporate the negative and positive marks in a way that really makes it a new piece, but doesn't deny the past. And tonight with Roy's blessing, we're gonna actually be accentuating a little bit more of the um, middle part of the treble cleft, and then we'll look at it and make a determination together with Roy, whatever he wants, he's gonna get. And then we'll see if it's appropriate to maybe accentuate a little bit more. Why don't you take a look in the mirror and give me some direction. Like, imagine where you see red. Because I'm, I'm imagining red really kind of accentuates the on the outside, and the inside of your arm, yeah. Really just focusing on giving it some accentuating kind of dimension with a clean, very fine line of red. Nothing big, nothing. Just on that side, nothing on this side? On, on, no, like on this side of this, like in here, like see in oh, here? Red. Oh, I see. All down here, red. Okay. Oh, it's just like a yeah. shadow. Kind exactly, of and then, but it won't be shaded. It's going to be a red line, clean red line. The reason I take the hair off is sometimes the ink will get, you know, caught up in there on the needle. All right, pretty. Here we go. Got it. Why don't you uh, take a look? Awesome. Take a good critical look, like I always say, you know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, definitely. My goal is not too Red, much, really. not too little, but just. Oh, wow, that's really nice, Eric. Great job you did there. Just enough red in there, not too much, just enough that makes it stand out. Perfect. To date, uh, we've nearly had a thousand people ap apply for the program. The application is a, a five-page essay application, which is attainable on our website. Eric's conception of sacred transformation came from one of his mentors and best friends, his very own grandfather. A really clear vision of my. Uh, my grandfather, who I was very close with, uh, laying in a hospital bed, but unlike, unlike how I remember seeing him at the end there where he had lost a lot of weight, um, he was nice and big. He was still a big, big guy and he was laying there and uh, he said to me, clear as a bell, he says, Eric, some people make a mark and um, they make a mark in their life and uh, then they'll spend their entire life trying to erase that mark. He says other people will make a mark and others will spend their whole lifetime trying to duplicate that mark. And he goes, uh, I'm happy with the marks I've made in my life and I'm ready to move on. 